Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome to today's Wild Rift video. And I bet you never thought you'd see me do a video on the cat Yumi. I've been playing support a little bit over the last few days. So I have a little bit of support content coming out uh, over the next few days, which is going to be quite exciting. But one of the supports that I played is Yumi. Now, Yumi is one of them supports that everyone hates. It's very difficult to kind of get your hands on because it gets banned every single game. In my opinion, it's not the best solo queue support because sometimes you have to rely on randoms to be able to make full use of Yumi because obviously when you're sitting on someone, then you're going to have to make sure that that someone is actually, you know, pretty good at the game. So I think this is not the best in terms of solo queue, but in terms of duo queue or even trio queue support, this is one of the best supports to play. Whether you play duo queue with an ADC down in bot lane or whether you play with a jungle, just make sure that you're always on your duo lane or duo partner and then you'll be able to give them extra damage, give them healing, you'll be able to do free damage at the same time. So overall, it could be very, very powerful. And you'll see it as well in today's gameplay. Now, before we end today's gameplay, let's take a quick look at the build. As for the support item, I like to go for Spectral Sickle on Yumi. Now, there are some other options you can go. You can go for something like Ancient Coin as well. Uh, it can be very good. Relic Shield is a little bit hit or miss because you have to jump out with Yumi to be able to last hit and get the stacks on Relic Shield. Ancient Coin is okay because it just means you get passive stacks over time. But Spectral Sickle is quite good because you get a lot of ability power overall. And most of the time, it's really easy to hit your abilities with Yumi. Most of the time, you'll be using your first ability, aiming that around the minions and hitting enemy champions every single time. So you can get stacks fairly quickly with Spectral Sickle. But if you don't feel confident in that, you can go for Ancient Coin instead. Loon's Echo is... By far the best AP item in the game. It's such a powerful item. You can use this on supports. You can use this on mid lane champions, junglers, pretty much anywhere that you play an AP champion. Most of the time, Luden's Echo is going to work out great. A lot of ability power, maximum mana, ability haste, and disordic echo passive means that you'll be able to deal bonus a a um, magic damage and also deal a little bit of AoE damage as well. So this is really good for just allowing you to get more ability power. So your heals are going to be more powerful. Your poke damage is going to be more powerful overall. Um, so it's really, really nice. And then after the Loon Zeko, you can start to go for some support items. Items like Ardent Sensor are very, very good because when you're healing or shielding, which your shielding also works with your passive, you'll be able to give your ally champion that you're sitting on extra attack speed and bonus magic damage on hit. So really good for AD carries down in the bot lane, whether it's like Kaiser, Caitlyn, or someone like Olaf as well uh, in the jungle can be very good with Ardent Sensor. Star for Flame Water is more if you want to sit on, you know, AP champions. Say, for example, you have a Gragas in the jungle that you're duo queue with. You can go for Star for Flame Water beforehand. Again, really nice stats. But this time, healing or shielding will grant you both ability haste and also ability power. So it can still be very good even if you use this on an AD carry or even if you build this when you're sitting most of the time on an AD carry or an AD jungler because it gives you more ability power. It gives you more mana and also gives you a little bit of ability haste as well. And also giving ability power and ability haste over to another champion is still not the worst thing in the world. Then you can go for something like Death Cap, which is a really, really powerful AP item. This kind of rounds out your build, really. Go for a Death Cap, get that lot of ability power, increase all your ability power as well by 40%. So healing your poke damage is going to hurt a lot. You can see that I have the boots as the final item for this build. That's because most of the time you don't actually want to build boots on Yumi because you don't really need it. You don't really need the extra movement speed. The only reason you would you would um, you would want to go boots of mana is if you spam your abilities a lot and that 150% magic uh, mana regeneration can definitely come in handy when you're using your abilities a lot. Obviously, you get 55 ability power, and also you get a little bit of magic penetration. So you can build this whenever you have the gold for it, but I wouldn't recommend to build it early on. I'd recommend to probably finish at least one item before you get your boots, maybe two items, depending on how much gold you have. For the runes, summon airy, really good for poke damage and also for the healing. Just works hand in hand and works great on uh, both offensive and also defensive defensive stats so really really nice as for the other runes you have two different options you can go for this is more of the defensive route um in terms of the runes or you can go for a more offensive route the defensive route is going for the resolve tree going for things like font of life because it's really easy to land your ability uh, your first ability with yumi and also give you and your ally a little bit of healing loyalty obviously you've got no other better option here than loyalty and loyalty you're always going to give your ally that you're always sitting on the bonus armor and magic resist 
and also revitalize giving you extra shielding which is going to be great and then for your secondary rune you can go for many different options i quite like cheap shot because your first ability actually slows so you're going to be applying the true damage every single time you hit your first ability uh, or you can go for something like scorch for the early game damage if you want a little bit uh, of extra damage mark the weak can also give you a little bit of extra damage or you go for something with inspiration something like transcendence to give you more ability haste there's many different options that you can go but most of the time i go for either uh cheap shot or mark the weak anything like that just to give me a little bit more damage however you can go for a different route with yumi that's more of an offensive route with yumi you can actually go for the domination tree go for something like scorch to give you extra poke damage this will probably be either cheap shot or mark the weak most of the time it's cheap shot and then you can go for eyeball collector because you'll be getting a lot of takedowns obviously takedowns means kills and assists and if you're sitting on someone and giving them stats you don't actually need to do anything and you'll get the assists all the time so you'll be able to stack up eyeball collector very very quickly and that means for your secondary rune you go for something like revitalize to get more healing so this is definitely a lot more offensive if you want more damage for the laning phase if you feel like you can win that 2v2 down the bot lane if you want to deal more damage and be more of a carry with yumi then you could definitely go for something like this but most of the time i like to go for the resolve tree because i think it's just a lot more uh, a lot better and just a lot more uh, valuable in terms of what runes you get then for the summer spells again this can be very very flexible i like to go for double combat some of the spells ignite and barrier but there are many different options you can go if you're uh, allied champion um if um you know if you don't want to go heal you don't have to go heal i don't think heal is is a must um obviously you will heal your ally more than yourself so heal can be very very good to go and um, the big thing is, is that barrier will actually work when you're sitting on champions so when you're sitting on someone like a um a dual lane carry down the bot lane if you use the barrier it'll actually work on them not not you so that could be very that could be very very good but you can go for like double defenses some of those go for something like hill barrier if you want to i like to play more aggressive i like to go for ignite barrier because ignite barrier gives me that little bit of kill pressure during the lane phase and also gives us that little bit of anti-heal as well if we do need them but yeah as i mentioned playing support down in the dual lane playing yumi i never thought i'd do a video on this uh, my videos over the next few days are going to be uh voiceovers because most of the time i played these games off stream uh so you'll be able to see a little bit of me with voiceover i'll be able to explain a little bit more how i play the game and how i you know roam around the map and what decisions i make and hopefully you get to learn a thing or two over the next few days but yeah hopefully you enjoy the gameplay stay safe and i'll see you all in the next water video peace all right, here we go on to the gameplay with the little scary cat Yumi. I mean, this this champion is this champion is something. All right, I I don't know how else to describe this champion than annoying, difficult to play against, easy to play. I I don't know what else to say really about the cat. But we are playing uh, Yumi down in the duo lane with Ezreal. Uh, Ezreal is a really, really good duo lane carry to pair with Yumi uh, because Ezreal as well is a super safe, really far back, just poke champion that could really do um, a lot. Obviously, you can see here that Zeri does walk into the bush. We do do a little bush tactic. That's something that you could do quite a lot. And I might as well get first blood just on time. I honestly think I saved him with the shield there as well, with the uh, passive shield um, of Yumi. Um, but yeah, as I was mentioning, uh, with, with that bush tactic, you can kind of do that most of the time at level 1. You do have to be very careful, because it really depends on the lane matchup, the 2 versus 2 matchup. Champions like Nautilus and Thresh and Karma are very good at level 1. And because I took double combat summoners, and because I know my Ezreal has first strike this game, I knew that we could have won the 2v2 anyway against the Zeri, but luckily for us, the Zeri actually walked straight into the bush and gave us first blood. Uh, which is always quite nice. I tried to, tried to chop them in the bush again and tried to sneak straight in. But uh, unfortunately, it wasn't going to go in our favor. I'm using a little technique here. As you can see, The when you buy a Spectral Sickle or any support item, even when you don't have stacks on something like Relic Shield, you can actually last hit and help your dual lane carry farm if you want to do that. Um, so you can see I was just helping my dual lane carry farm underneath the tower. And you'll get the exact same amount of gold. You'll get the same gold. Your dual lane carry will get the same amount of gold. Uh, so this is actually really, really nice overall. Lulu, for some reason, is walking up into an Ezreal when we're really, really far ahead. And there you go. That's another kill for us. <laughs> Two kills on the board already uh, for the Ezreal Yumi down in the dual lane. But th this dual lane combo is so difficult to play against because... Even when you're ganking this dual lane combo as well, it's like, how do you even do anything at all? See, I'm trying to tank the tower here. I'm trying to kill the Ezreal. I mean, kill the Zeri. Sorry. 
is a little bit difficult to kill the Zeri underneath the tower because I'm not playing a CC champion like Nautilus or Thresh or anyone like that. So it's a little bit more difficult. So you can see for now, all we're doing is just poking out their Zeri. And there we go. Another kill. <laughs> Use Ezreal well using that third ability forward. So I can get into range to keep using my, my first ability. And also get into range to use Ignite. It was very, very helpful. And that's already three quick and easy kills down the dual lane. Um, and y Lulu is one of them supports that can't really do too much against the Yumi. Because Lulu is one of them supports that... You kind of want to sit back, you want to relax, you don't really want to do too much. Um, and you kind of want to wait until you get to a point in the game where um, you can your shields and your heals basically allow you to do, you know, your dual lane carry to do two versus one, uh, which is quite nice. You can see here I'm going for Luden's Echo as the first item. Don't need the boots, kind of took me a long time to actually get Luden's for a second there. Uh, because I couldn't find the item for some reason. Um, but yeah. By, by Luna's Echo first item, really, really important for Yumi because you just get so much stats overall, even though it's not even a, a support item. In a way, it's still a very strong item that you can you can build and it will just give you a lot of damage overall. You see me here just checking just to see if anyone went back to base. It looks like they did go back to base. Oh, Karzix. Uh, I'm not too sure if the Karzix can kill the Yone. Nope. Can't kill the Yone in the end. Not enough damage. You can see here the uh, the damage that we can deal with Yumi is really, really nice. And I'm, I'm jumping out here. I kind of make a little bit of a mistake because I jump out to try and get my stacks. Bit of a mistake, though. Yeah, I definitely would have played this very, very differently. Watching this back, I definitely would have played this very differently. Now, the reason why I jumped out of um, Ezreal there is because I wanted to auto-attack the tower. And the reason why I wanted to auto-attack the tower is because you get stacks for your special sickle. Um, you don't actually have to keep using abilities and auto attacks on enemy champions. You can also use it on towers. So I saw that I had stacks. So I wanted to walk up and auto attack the tower a few times. Obviously my brain not thinking, obviously polymorph could be a thing. Uh, and obviously polymorph just uh, basically stops Yumi from jumping onto anyone or basically allowing her to play super safe. When Yumi gets hit by any sort of crowd control at all, when she's outside of an enemy, cha uh, an ally champion, sorry, then she can't jump on an ally champion for the next few seconds. So you do have to be a little bit careful where you jump out and try and use your passive or try and stack special sickle, like in this case, for example. Um, but I was still able to play that okay. I mean, I could have placed my ultimate a little bit differently as well, maybe a little bit to the side to try and hit the Zeri. But I was just making sure that I kept my Ezreal safe. I mean, my Ezreal's so far ahead at this point that it doesn't really mean too much. Um, so it's quite okay. So Dragon and Herald are up. I don't think we're going to do too much in terms of Dragon and Herald. We're just going to ward it for now. Probably head back down to the, uh, head back down to the dual lane. You can do a little bit of damage here as well to the uh, Lulu. Because we can see that the uh, the Zeri just like dipped over the wall. She's like, nope, not today. So I'm just staying here at the moment on my Ezreal. I could actually go on my Karzix here as well. But I know that my Ezreal could definitely play uh, a lot more aggressive. I tried to predict the uh, the Yone there. But unfortunately, I, I couldn't. I tried to predict where the Yone maybe could have gone. Um, but yeah, didn't. And this is one bad thing. Okay, that, I don't know how that Yone hit. This is one bad thing about playing Yumi sometimes, is sometimes your duo Q actually completely into you. I mean, we got a trade kill in the end, but yeah, we couldn't get much else. Zeri got a few kills in the end. That's not great. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was I was duo Q with the Ezreal and the Karzix, and obviously the Karzix went a little bit too deep, maybe thinking that you could actually uh, he could actually kill the Ari, but unfortunately he didn't. That meant that I died as well. And that's kind of uh, something that I wanted to explain with Yumi. Is that when you're playing... I mean, obviously this is different because that was with my, my trio Q partner. So my partner was just, you know, trolling completely. Uh, but when you're playing solo Q, sometimes players can play very, very aggressive and be very aggressive. Um, but the thing is, is that you kind of don't really have a choice with Yumi. You have to decide who you want to be on. And that... You don't really have a choice where the champion goes or what the champion does. Because all you're doing is just giving them heals, giving them poke damage, giving them CC. That's the only thing you do with them. Drift Herald going to get popped there. Nasus needs to be a little bit careful. Uh, Kaiser, sorry, needs to be a little bit careful. See, I'm jumping out here to try and CC the Nasus. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to. But we're doing a little bit of poke damage, getting a little bit of healing, and there we go. 
We got another kill as well. Another two kills, sorry, in the bound lane. You can roam relatively well, I think, with a um, with a Yumi. It, it, Yumi's not the best roaming champion, but if, for for example, a jungler, like I said, if you're duo queue with a jungler, then actually running around with that jungler can be, you know, very, very good. Because then you're just giving that jungler extra damage, extra healing. You're dealing more damage as well. And it's actually a lot easier to gank when you have a Yumi on top of you as well because you have the uh, the ultimate. Do need to be a little bit careful here. This Zeri is uh, super, super fast. Just have to wait until uh, the Zeri ultimate runs out. And as soon as that Zeri ultimate runs out, we can try and kill her. There we go. Zeri ultimates run out. A little bit of damage. Somehow the Ezra ulti didn't hit there. And I think the uh, Garen wanted to jump in to get the kill. Does get the kill in the end. On the uh, the Kaiser gets the kill in the end. Not the Garen with the ultimate. Um, but still, very, very strong position to be in right now. 12 kills to 6. As you can see, I'm just staying on my Ezra, on my Ezra at the moment. You can see that sometimes you do run out of mana with Yumi because they change how her passive works a little. And I realized this during the game. So I was like, okay, let me buy this Boots of Mana. Maybe the mana regeneration will help you out. But they changed something with Yumi quite recently. I can't remember how long ago it was. Maybe it was like a month or two ago. Basically, they changed it where your passive now doesn't regen mana. So you can't just jump out, auto attack, regen mana. Or get like a restore a little bit of mana back. You basically have, have to kind of make sure that your mana is not um your mana consumption is is pretty you know well done you make sure that you're not wasting your abilities you're not using your abilities when you don't need to because you can run you can run out of mana quite quickly uh, in terms of boots upgrades there are various different boots upgrade options locket is a very good option uh rejuvenation is also a good option extra healing uh you can also go for something like the uh, veil enchant as well to help your uh, dual lane partner or whoever you're playing with uh, basically stop any crowd control coming their way. And I realized that I built Locket here and I think I kind of made a mistake because you can see here, look, imagine if I had Veil Enchant here. The Veil Enchant would help so, so much if I had it. But yeah, unfortunately, my Ezreal does get caught by the Yone Ultimate. If I had the Veil Enchant there, it would have been fine because it actually would have stopped the CC coming in. Uh, from the Yone and would have actually helped the uh, Dezor well survive. But unfortunately, wasn't able to. And uh, yeah, we do lose that team fight mid. But to be fair, it was really well played by Yone as well. Uh, being able to dash over the wall was, was quite nice. Because it's getting another few cheeky kills there. Not too sure if he can actually kill the uh, Zeri. Has to flash over the wall. You can see that you can still get, you know, a little bit caught out when you're playing uh, Yumi Ezreal. Even though you are probably one of the most safest dual lane uh, carries or dual lane um, combos to play. Sometimes it can be a, a little bit difficult. Coming also in a few seconds, we can see that they are starting off this dragon. To be honest, I probably could have queued the dragon here. Watching it back, I probably should have queued the dragon instead of trying to kill the Yone. Because the Yone just didn't have any mana left. Of, uh, didn't have uh, smite at all. So because he didn't have smite, it meant that I could have just used my Q there and just easily been able to kill her. Um, kill the dragon. Unfortunately not. Another kill there. Sorry about that. Another kill there on the card six. You can see that Yumi's pretty easy to play. I mean, there's not much to say about Yumi. You're not doing any crazy mechanical plays. You're not really doing too much in terms of, you know, outplays or anything like that. All you do is you roam around. You figure out Who's the fed one on your team? That's kind of what you need to do. Who's the fed one on your team? Who's the one that I need to sit on? Who's the one that I need to make sure that I, I give the extra buff to? And obviously, in this case, going to be like the Ezreal or the Karthix. Somehow the only ulti ultimate hits there. Um, and the Ezreal does die. Again, it's probably my mistake. I didn't realize they had a ward in the uh, in their bush over there. They're still okay in the end. We're still in a really, really good spot right now. Garen needs to be a little bit careful. But yeah, you can see that Garen's a, Garen's a bit of a super tank. Garen's a bit tanky. He can take a lot of damage. I just need to be a little bit careful, though. I'm trying to do my best to try and do as much poke damage as possible with my first ability. But in the end, not doing too much. Going to get the refresh of the blue buff here as well, which is quite nice. I was trying to go back up there. You can see my, my jungle is trolling me. Look, see? I just wanted to go back to base. And my jungle is just trolling me. You can see here I'm going for Ardent Sensor. Um, thinking about it now, maybe Ardent Sensor wasn't the best choice because my Kaiser's going AP. 
as well, uh, as well does a little bit of AP and AD. I mean, I guess attack speed is not that bad. On like Ezreal, Kaisa, Karzix, Garen as well. I mean, I guess attack speed is not that bad. It's always kind of that um, decision you have to make whether Ardent Sensor or Star Flow Foam Water is going to be better uh, in certain situations. Depends which one you want to go for. See my Karzix jumping in here. I was able to use my my ultimate to CC a little bit, but nothing too crazy. You see the Karzix here. And <laughs> look at this. Look, I'm stuck over the wall here. I'm like, ah, someone save me. I just, my Karzix tried to kill me again. Look at me. I'm just auto attacking the Yumi and I survived. <laughs> I survived on one HP. I have no idea how I survived that, but I did in the end. It was quite funny, actually, because my Karzix tried to jump in get a few more kills and i'm like stuck over the wall and i have to make sure i sit in the exact spot to make sure that i don't take any damage at all i hit my first ability and uh i die for it and so does kaiser as well <laughs> don't underestimate don't underestimate the nexus damage the nexus damage is pretty scary because once you uh th that's one thing as well to note with yumi is that if you do land your uh, first ability and if you're underneath the tower, then you will take tower aggro. Even if you're on top of an ally champion, you will still take tower aggro. Even if you're, um, even if you're not jumped out or anything like that, you will still take tower aggro. Because it's going in for a few more kills. First strike. Oh no, not today. Lulu too broken. <laughs> uh, Lulu is pretty strong. Lulu is pretty damn strong. Lulu is pretty damn strong. But it's fine. We got the top lane inhibitor. Top lane inhibitors is, is, is okay. We could have got the mid lane inhibitor. Oh, we actually also got the bot lane inhibitor as well. So it's actually really, really nice. You can see here, I'm just like jumping around, making sure that I find my Ezreal because Ezreal's the only one that I can really trust. I should really trust my Karzix as well since we're playing Trio Cube, but I can't even trust the Karzix at this point because you can see that the Karzix kind of already, already ran us down. A little bit. Ari down the bot lane should die here. Oh, he's gonna survive. He survives on one HP. He survives on one. Oh no! Kaiser got him in the end. I forgot that happens. The Void Seeker from downtown. Kaiser gets a kill. Like I said, there's not really too much to say. Like I said, most important things to note when you're playing Yumi um, is play Trio Q or uh, Duo Q or Trio Q. I think that's the one advice I would give when playing Yumi. Make sure that you always focus on a champion that is fed because not all the time it's the best to sit on your dual lane carry down in the bot lane. Sometimes it's good to stay on your jungler. Sometimes it's good to stay on your mid laner. All it is is about realizing the, the situation of the game, realizing that, oh, my mid lane is fed. I should sit on my mid lane of this game and I should adapt my build towards that. And then, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, whether you go for Star Flow Water to give you extra AP, whether you go for Ardent Sensor to give you extra attack speed, there are many different ways that you can uh, go about it. But still, pretty decent game overall. We did kind of smurfed it really down in the dual lane. We got quite a few kills, quite a few decent outplays down in the dual lane. And you can see that when you're ahead with Yumi, it's very, very difficult to uh, to kind of lose as well. There you go, MVP performance with Yumi as well. Can't go wrong with that MVP, MVP performance with the cat. 2, 3, and 17 overall. 13,000 damage. I mean, not a crazy amount of damage, but my healing and shielding overall probably helped out with that as well at the same time. You see there, Ezreal, 26,000 damage. Kaisa did pretty well. Kha'Zix did pretty well in the jungle as well, even though he into me a few times. But still, really, really strong performance overall. Um, really shows you the power of Yumi in the dual lane when you're playing duo Q because you can win that 2v2 in the dual lane because you have the shielding, you have the healing. And when you go for double combat summoner spells, you can definitely win that 2v2 down the bot lane. But yeah, Yumi overall, really, really easy champion to play. Not the most fun champion to play, but I thought you, I'd bring you all this content anyway. Let me know what you think of Yumi down below in the comments. As always, take care, and I'll see you in the next wild video. Peace.